So, name some social media. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest. Um, I think Gmail must be a Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitter. And there's like Tumblr, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Um, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, YouTube, LinkedIn. I don't know if Tinder counts. <laughs> I'm sure there's a notable, uh, some notable others. Hello and welcome to On The Line, a documentary in which I'm going to be talking about social media and the people who use it. I took a bunch of people off the streets and shoved a camera in their face so you can listen to them say things like We live in the Stone Age. Stone. <laughs> oh, look at my amazing eyebrows. So what exactly is social media? Well, if you went to and asked someone on the street, they might say that it's a bit of a waste of time. Depending on the age group, at least. If you were to define social media, what would you get? According to Google, social media is defined as websites and applications that enable users to create and share content or to participate in social networking. First of all, there's an, uh, there's an issue we need to tackle. Many people have been talking about social media and its effect on the generation of today, or at least my age, and maybe some people a few years younger. I mean, currently we've got nine-year-olds playing on the internet. You've got seven-year-olds commenting on YouTube videos, which is a bit dodgy, don't you think? Who's letting seven-year-olds on the internet? So I asked my victim, um, I mean interviewees, what they thought of the effect on today's generation. Here's what they had to say. Um, so, what do you think is the effect of social media on today's generation? Mm. It's taking over people's lives. In today's generation? That's hard to answer. I don't think it was in any other generation, so it's... So, obviously, like, on one hand, social media is a really useful tool to, like, connect with people in different countries and all this kind of stuff. Like, personally, I have a friend in the Netherlands who, like, I wouldn't be able to speak to, really, if I didn't have social media. Like, phone calls would cost loads of money and everything. So, on the one hand, like, in, in that way, it's really good, but I think most of the time, we use it in a really, really damaging way. Mm. I feel like it's quite distracting. Yes. I feel like that it's really cliche, but like no one goes out and like lives life anymore because it's all through like our phones or like what we post on the internet and therefore people can get quite like a negative image of people's lives and think they were perfect. And so, yeah, I think it's quite distracting and possibly quite damaging, but also like, how would I pass any exams without waving to my friends? Very true. So. So it is? Yeah. Um, it's a lot easier to communicate to other people now. It provides a service cheaper than what the postal service can provide us, and it's a lot quicker and more effective. So, apart, I think it, apart from many, it's just made communication easier in general. I don't think there are things that our older generation wouldn't have done if they had had the technology now. Like you get little kids on their phones, oh, I, I'm going to put a picture on Pinterest up now. Yeah. How old are you? Twelve. No. That's not right. No. You should have a childhood no. without that little phone in your hand. They should at least have it when they're in high school. Well, I think they're probably more isolated because they probably don't actually meet up in person and they probably don't phone, telephone each other to speak in person. So they might be feeling more isolated because although they're online and can contact their friends whenever they want, they don't actually have any physical contact with them. And um, possibly their friends are further afield, like in Australia or various other places in the world or in the UK, and therefore it might be quite difficult to meet up with these people in person. Um, people probably know everything about everybody because it's online and therefore they don't actually need to ring them up or meet them anymore because they know everything about all of their friends online 
and they're probably quite quick to um, compare and judge people so they don't need to actually go and meet outside like in town or at clubs and pubs and things like that. People tend to probably type more than they do speak Yeah. because they don't they're not having I think they're probably not having proper conversation simply because you pick up a lot from the tone and manner of someone speaking. Yeah. And there's misconceived understanding because what you write is not what the other person necessarily reads, which is and therefore what people write down is not always what they were thinking mm -hmm. and the person who reads it, it's not always they misinterpret the way it was written and so the chances of communication failing are actually a lot higher if you're just typing. Basically I watched this video, um, I don't know if this is like completely relevant but I watched this video on addiction oh, yeah. and it was basically there was like this experiment where there was like um, two rats in a cage or something there was like a rat in a cage and it had like normal water and drugged water and it kept on going back to the drugged water um, and it overdosed and died you know and then like the scientists did another experiment on addiction they were like okay well if you think about it the rat doesn't actually have anything to do in the cage except drink the the two waters you know yeah. so like they built this thing called like rat park or rat city rat heaven i don't know what it was called but basically there were like there was like this massive cage like the size of a big room and there were like loads of floors like loads of rats there were like things the rats could do to play with they could make love to each other and all this stuff you know and um and there was the normal water and the drugged water and the rats hardly ever went to the drugged water um and if they did they never overdosed you know mm. And um, basically, what it told like the scientists and everything about addiction mm -hmm. is that you only get um, addicted to something if you're not fulfilled in your life. It's not about how addictive the substance is, it's about the circumstances that you're in. When it comes to using social media, there's a lot that you can do with it. They're not all for messing around and wasting time, although that's what a lot of people seem to be using it for. Many businesses rely on things like Facebook in order to get their businesses out into the wider world. Many other people want to be relevant in the wider world as well, for some reason. Uploading videos to YouTube and Vine, and making accounts on Twitter and Tumblr, trying to get a message out there, trying to say things, trying to get noticed, to be seen. And a lot of them are just doing it for the money. Because a lot of these websites now offer money if you get as many views using ad revenue and all of that sort of thing. This is a time of creativity and skill, although some of us are choosing to abuse that. But let's think for a little bit. What would happen if the internet, if we were just denied the use of the internet for a little bit? Let's see what my interviewees have to say. Could you survive without the internet? Um, it depends on the context because a lot of our technologies do rely on the internet and if we lost internet communication there would be a lot of communication issues around the world. Me specifically, if it was just localised to me losing the internet I probably could survive but the world probably would have a few problems if we lost all the internet services. Can I survive? Um, prior, in, my, in, in my social life I could easily survive without the internet mm -hmm. because I would ring people up anyway. I still ring my father up. Mm -hmm. I'll ring my friends up rather than I don't know, I'll still text them. Um, you can still arrange things and if you want to book something, you just ring it and ring them up. If you want to arrange go to a restaurant, go to the cinema, you can ring it ring people up. You can look it up the the number in it's harder to find numbers in the directory. So could I survive in my private social life? Yes I could, but it's beneficial to actually have the internet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No way. <laughs> like, firstly, all of my uni work is done via internet. Yeah. So could not learn about, I don't know, whatever I'm learning about, developing India without any stuff on the internet. Also, like, some of my friends are on year, years abroad, like one's in America this year, one's going to Spain next year, I couldn't talk to them. No. So, like, I feel like it allows me to contact people and moan when I need to, so... 
Mm-hmm. No, I could not survive. No. Yeah. yeah, I definitely could. I would rather survive without the internet, but I feel like obviously there is that element of addiction and it's like, in an ideal world, I would be living like on a hill with monks, <laughs> you know, just drinking, like eating mangoes and like no social media, no like system, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely could live without it, but I feel like in this world, because all of us are so unfulfilled and so disconnected from each other, we rely on it. And in this society, a lot of us can't live without it. But if we were put in an environment where we could just be happy and be in touch with our authentic selves and we could not judge and we could just love and all this stuff, we definitely would not need or want social media. Uh, Yes, but it might be a bit difficult now because I do rely on it for finding out information and it's very useful for solving problems when you've got a problem you can go and find what other people have done and seek information so yeah I could survive without it I have actually survived I didn't get the internet until at home until 1995 so before that uh, I survived quite happily without the internet it's because you didn't know it was a natural thing that you needed so. No, because it wasn't widely available to households yeah. until 92. That makes sense. Do enough at home. We don't have a rotor. We live in the Stone Age. Stone! <laughs> but yeah, but... I think I could to an extent. Yeah, yeah. If I can still text, that's fine. I'm happy with that. Because you've still got the PlayStation 2, which doesn't have the internet on. And I have that. Um, unfortunately, with the new Xboxes and PlayStation 4 and stuff, you have to be on the internet just to play bloody games with other people. Which kind of sucks, even though you could just be, hey, how about you come over and play a game with me? Yeah, that's much more helpful. And you get exercise on the way. Yeah. Well, the other person does. So, what are the negatives of social media, and are there really any positives? Of course, there's going to be positives and negatives for anything. According to the survey I did a few weeks ago, social media is just a screen to hide behind to provide anonymity for when you're preying on the easily led. It's also just for people who want to waste time or avoid actually going outside and meeting people. It all sounds like a terrible horror story, and in a way, it is. Many scientists have been trying to do experiments whether to find out whether social media is actually necessary and could we survive without it. According to my interviewees, yes, you can survive without it. However, a few years ago, a university professor did an experiment on some of his students. He made them not use any devices or social media for at least a few weeks. And when it was over, the students were enraged and they thought that their human rights had been violated. It would seem that they were having something known as information deprivation. When a person is used to such an intake of information, such as when you get it on Twitter or Facebook, and they're so used to being able to pick up information off Google straight away, then without that, you don't know what to do. You get a bit, ooh, go and read a book. What? I can't read a book? But, the cons- but considering the stu- one of the students thought that his human rights had been, in fact, violated, then there really is no hope for anyone. A lot of scientists these days trying to come up with all sorts of horror stories about social media and why it's bad for you. They're saying it can cause ADHD, autism, and make you feel no emotion. They need to really take data from a wider range, I think. So what are the benefits of social media? Um, like I said, um, it's f- easier communication, it provides a service that's cheaper than our postal service, and it's a lot quicker than our postal service as well. And it can also be used to find out information that you otherwise wouldn't have been able to find out. The, the internet is an amazing tool for collecting information. Okay. We're able to communicate with other people across like the world especially when it comes to doctors and the research to curing diseases such as cancer. It's kind of much more helpful than being 
in the same country, oh, I have to go see this person. I've got to go on a long flight just to say, yeah, this is helping. So it's better if you just communicate over the social media to state what you found out about that sort of stuff. Also to find long lost relatives. That's also helpful. Yeah. Right. Uh, what about the ne ne what about the negatives? What do you think are the benefits of social media? Um, the benefits are that you could probably share well you can share your photos um, with your family yes. who may be living a long way away from you. Um, and um, well, you can FaceTime people, you can Skype them, which you wouldn't be able to do without the internet, so that's quite handy because it's more personal than ringing them on the telephone or sending them a text. So, yeah, there are benefits, especially if you live a long way away from people that you want to personally see but you can't get to mm. in person. Yeah. Um, I think one big benefit is... Um, Okay, I would say there's two main benefits mm -hmm. that I have picked up on. The first one is like international connection. So speaking to people in different countries, continents, you know, towns, all this yeah. stuff who you wouldn't be able to speak to otherwise. Because obviously like, you know, your soulmate could be living in China, you yeah. know, and like the internet's really good for that because it connects you to people, but only on a kind of slightly superficial level because obviously you can't really get to know them. Yeah. Um, yeah, learning, because I feel like if you're stuck with something at school and say you're doing homework, I can't count the amount of times I was doing homework in like high school and like we had like forums on social media or like some, there are some Twitter pages where I know some people like even at uni if you like hashtag something it will give you the answer. So. I feel like social media is quite good with learning because it can also build your confidence if you're stuck with a question you can be like oh wait I'm stuck here and someone can be like oh yeah this and yeah just keeping up to date with people's lives stalking celebrities guilty if you're planning things and you're planning holidays or anything you want to find out it's much quicker to, to research things if you're going to buy anything you can find out what everybody else thought about the product in fact, I probably spend more time dithering as to whether or not to buy something because by the, by the time I've searched so many websites, I've probably found something else to buy and I've got no idea. The last coat I bought, I think I spent three weeks, you know, looking around on the internet, but at least I eventually bought something. Yeah. <laughs> what about the negatives? As I said, children shouldn't be on it. It's kind of, yay, the stereotypical, typical where I think I think that's going to happen, especially the amount of times they go on the internet. It sucks. How about picking up a ball and playing outside, you dummies? That's why we have parks. That's why the world invested in parks so you could go out have some fresh air. Do you remember what that was? Exactly. I feel like you've... Yeah, I've kind of covered that. Yeah. Um, I want to go into like one element of it a bit more, which is the whole superficiality thing. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. Um, just like... Um, okay, let me think about my words for a second. We use social media, we use likes and comments to validate our worth, you yeah. know? So... If I'm having a bit of a bad day, I might just post a picture of myself and people will like it and all this stuff and it'll make me feel better about myself and it'll like justify my worth and everything and we rely on it too much, you know? Mm. And that's just really not good, you know? Yeah. And we, we feel like our, our identity on social media kind of determines how, I don't know, just how worthy we are and how deserving we are of friendship and love and happiness you know and yeah so I don't like that okay. I think that's pretty suckish because it's like we shouldn't depend on anything we shouldn't depend on other people you know we should yeah. just you know yeah oh. okay so what about the negatives oh my god so many negatives <laughs> <laughs> well like I guess you 
there's so many people who like post this perfect image or of their life and you just take that like I, I think it's really damaging to young people because I don't know celebrities and stuff and like youtubers and you just see this perfect life and everyone's like oh my god my life's so rubbish because I'm not like that and I don't have a Nietzsche bullet and everyone does and I'm not healthy and you just it, I think it can make you feel really bad about yourself yeah. Um, you end up comparing yourself to other people, so I feel like that's really bad. Um, and also addiction. So many people will just be on it constantly, constantly. I feel like particularly like even like young young people who probably aren't supposed to have social media. I think they're meant to be like fourteen maybe for Facebook. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. For people younger than that, they're still on it probably, and they spend most of their time probably looking through social media than going out and probably like riding a bike. Yeah. I suppose a select few could may become too obsessed with it, but apart from... Oh, and also there are some social media networks who will sell out your information to private companies like Facebook. Um, and I suppose the NSA keeping the tab on everybody who uses the social media seems quite controlling, though I further think about it. But um, apart from other people interfering, I don't think... So is there anything wrong inherently with social media? Uh, negatives, social media, well, I think it's too much of a distraction yeah. for the younger generation and it's taking them away from the, the what, what they should be doing at college and it, or school even, and it's distracting them from what needs to be done. And perhaps they don't uh, communicate as, as friends should do and they don't go out as much and it's so much it's just it's so much easier for them to sit in a room uh, next to a computer and type when rather than actually getting out and playing with some friends or going somewhere and actually doing something hmm. so probably that and it's made things accessible as a lot on the a lot of things on the internet which perhaps um, are good for the younger generation to see because you get all sorts of malicious things being put on the internet and so it has its downside because people you have to be very careful you know with any information yeah and then people keep losing information it's at all these companies if you're if you have an account with them on a mobile phone and uh, the company has a an insecure database and loses all, you know, half a million um, bank accounts, personal details, then suddenly um, it's putting a lot of people at risk. So from that, that point of view, it just has to be more secure, hmm. I think. Um, the negatives are probably stalking and bullying um, because it's easier to do online than in person because people tend to not do it in person so much than there's a small dog here. What do you think about whether the internet's a negative thing, Heidi? Okay, do you want me to continue? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, uh, so I really think that, I also think that people are ostracised if they don't have enough friends like on Facebook, you know, people take the mickey out of them. If they don't have the right friends on Facebook, the most popular people, maybe they're ostracised by other young people. Um, I do think that they can be a way of stalking people, tracking people down that don't want to be tracked down. Um, so I think there are quite a lot of negative aspects of it. You can't, once somebody's got hold of you online, it's very, you can change all your passwords, change all your uh, usernames and your addresses, etc. But it's a bit of a nuisance. So really you don't, well you don't, you're not as private as you used to be. You can't keep yourself to yourself so much if you decide to go on social media. You are opening yourself up. And the other negative thing is whatever you do on social media, it's always kept. So whatever comments you make, if they're negative things, can be viewed a long time afterwards online um, by future employers or um, security services of various other people to which you might not want them to know all of your foibles.
because you might want them to be much more private, but you've gone and put it on the web. Lots of people have got used to life without social media. I know I certainly have. We've all got so used to us okay. twittering and our tumbling and whatever it is you do on Facebook. We've all got used to us knowing the information that we get off Google instantly. We're all so used to it that a lot of us have forgotten what life was like before it. What do we even do? What do we even do before we took this thing and we made it our god? Because that's what we did. We made social media our deity. We would be lost without it. And here's the thing. What if it just stopped? What if it just poofed out of existence? What would we do then? Hey, eh? what, would, what would we do afterwards? <laughs> so, what might happen if the internet crashed forever? Um, the cure for like diseases would slow down tremendously, so that would be a minor problem. I'm assuming that, as we already know what the internet is like, I'm assuming it wouldn't take too long to make another. Yeah. Or maybe some people most probably go to the library and read a book. Or go outside more. Which wouldn't be so bad because then exercise would be done. And then we wouldn't so be worrying about diabetes. Because that's reached to 4 million people over the world has diabetes. That sucks. Uh, oh, like I said, there would be a lot of communication issues. Yeah. Um, MMOs would probably die out, obviously, and uh, I don't know, it's hard, I don't know how much technology relies on the internet, there'd probably be quite a few problems, I'd imagine, well we'd have to probably adjust our way of life slightly as well. A lot might happen. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so... Um, so much of the news is on the internet now, um, gosh, if it just stopped, I think people would be really angry for a while, but afterwards they'd just get used to it and life would move on and I think maybe, um, it would be simpler and people would be happier on some level, you know, I mean maybe people would find a new way to be superficial and shallow but <laughs> I think it would be good yeah personally I mean I would definitely miss like connecting with people and also like I feel like the internet is quite a good place to share your feelings and like watch talks and stuff I don't yeah. know a lot would happen I think everybody would have a completely different reaction but I think for me personally I'd like it because we, we achieved a lot before it came along, mm -hmm. but you know, as an industry, I mean, when you think of, well, we built the Concorde, didn't we, you know, so if we wanted to do that without the internet, we built lots of nuclear power stations, I mean, I used to work on one, and so you, if we could do that, then what do we need the internet for, mm -hmm. really? Mm, the world would stop working. Like, legit stop working. Even if it was like, okay, maybe not forever, someone would find some alternative internet, but the world would stop working because so much stuff around you is based through the internet. Like, I don't know, all your work through the internet, like, you save stuff to OneDrive. Yeah. Uh, emails, a lot of those are like email systems through the internet. All of my uni works on the internet. Like, I don't know, the whole world runs through communicating constantly with one another across Wi-Fi and across internet and the, the world just would cease to function. Mm. But rubbish, really. Um, if the internet crashed forever, well, I think we'd all survive because obviously we survived before the internet crashed and people still managed to get good jobs, good degrees, various other things. Um, I think if it crashed, We'd have to use books more, libraries more, I think we'd have to use maps more because we couldn't rely on online maps and GPS and things like that. Um, I also think that we'd have to telephone people more, meet people in person more, 
to talk to them about what they're doing and catch up with social gossip and things like that because we couldn't do it online. Um, I think that our posture might be improved because we're not constantly sitting in front of a laptop or on a sofa with a tablet or in front of a PC. So we might actually um, spend less time sitting down, so it might be better for our health. Uh, our eyesight might possibly improve because we're not using our eyes so much on screen time. So I suppose, what would happen if it crashed forever? It wouldn't be the end of the world, we just have to readjust. I think young people might find it quite hard to readjust because they've got in the habit of using it for absolutely everything, including finding recipes online and cooking in the kitchen from their laptop and things rather than using a cookery book. But I do think that we could survive okay without the internet, although it would be a slower world. It would take you longer to find everything and maybe we might be more patient with each other because I think if we didn't have the internet we wouldn't be so demanding because we get the answers really quickly online now and so we've become quite impatient if we don't get the answers within two or three minutes whereas before we used to have to be much more persistent and resilient in finding information and being more patient with people, mm. collecting information so that's what I think so if, we were, so if we look at it, this is what we've come to. The human race, dependent on looking at a screen. At least this generation, anyway. I know plenty of people in the older generation who, do, who don't even need Twitter. Realistically, we don't even need this stuff. We just think we do. Think about that.